a lot of people can say that they bought their dream car. Not a lot of people can say that they built it. I was 16 years old when I bought the car. My parents were going through a divorce and it was a little bit hard on my brothers and I. And I felt like the car was a good escape and work on something constructive. My budget was very small. I saw it on eBay. When I got the car, it wasn't anywhere close to how it was described on the eBay listing. And I guess it taught me the lesson of don't buy things sight unseen. There was rot in the floors, the wheels were falling off. No brakes, all the lights were burnt out and it was running on three cylinders. All the things that were wrong with the car were covered up with all the things that were right about the car. I was just so happy that I got my first car that I just said, okay, I'm gonna fix it, it'll be fine. And then I had the accident where I took the car and I crashed it through a fence. Teenager, when they get their license, they always think they're the best driver in the world. And you learn the hard way that you're not the best driver in the world very quickly. I decided to fix the car myself, but the insurance was going to give me $3,000. I had a pair of garden shears, I had a hacksaw, and I had a crowbar and like a sledgehammer. And I slowly learned by taking the car apart how the car goes together. I even put a chain around the front of the car and tied it to a tree and put the car in reverse to pull the nose back out from the damage of the accident. I drove the car around for about six months and then I said to myself, why don't I fix this car? I borrow my friend Sawzall this time and I slice the nose of the car off. And my mom pulls into the driveway and she says to me, what are you doing? Why are you cutting apart your car? I go, don't worry, I've got this. I didn't have an engine hoist. I had to figure out some way to get the engine out. I finally figured a way to lever it out of the car and it was just an absolute mess. There was transmission fluid over the whole garage. And then I tried painting the car in the garage and it made the whole garage blue and the car turned out terrible. My mom still to this day still talks about the mess I made in the garage trying to put this car back together. So it was winter time, the car was basically sitting in the driveway as a shell. It looked like it was destined to go to the scrapyard. That's how I found my way down to Dominic's. I interned for them and they showed me and taught me the proper way to fix a car. I had the car on the road and I think the only thing the car was missing at that point was paint. So I bought some spray paint and I spray painted the car. Right before I went to college, I said, I'm gonna need something that I can drive every day to school. And the 2002 with no heat or air conditioning or airbags wasn't going to be a good fit for college. So I got rid of the car and I was beyond upset. I got a BMW E30 and everything started going horribly wrong. Oxygen sensors. Like, it needed a computer, it needed all these electronic, that in my 2002 I never had. So I saved up the money and I got the car back. The car actually came back to me looking incredibly tired, looking like it, it was a dog that ran away and came back two months later. My first thing was, let's get the car running again. So I got it running properly. It was only about a year ago where I said to myself, I really think I should paint this car. I 
had the chrome removed around the upper part of the car. I also had the belt trim removed. The, so it gave it a very clean, subtle look. People call it the pumpkin. It weighs just over 2,000 pounds. It has a milled head and we raised the compression a little bit. It is uh, bigger valves, a custom ground cam. It has about a little over 150 horsepower. And with the little bit of weight and the big amount of power it has, it's a lot of fun to drive. Through all the stages, my mom allowed the car to be at the house and making a mess. You can still find nuts and bolts in the driveway from the car four years ago when I was taking it apart. I realized that I took that nightmare and I turned it into a dream. Because everyone says to me, well, you killed the value of your car. You put the fender flares on it, you took the chrome off. This car has no resale value. The amount of value this car has given me, it's taught me about cars and driving and fixing things. You can't put a price tag on that. It doesn't matter what the car's worth because I'm, I'm not selling it again. I'm gonna keep this car for the rest of my life. My name is Carter Kelly Kramer. I drive a 1976 BMW 2002.